There is a workforce shortage. Businesses need to fill positions. People with disabilities want to work. Did you know the turnover rate for employees with disabilities is only 8% compared to 45% for other workers, and employees with disabilities have nearly identical job performance ratings as those without disabilities. We asked employers to share their experiences employing workers with disabilities. Here's what they had to say. What are the best reasons to hire workers with disabilities? They bring a lot to the table that you might not get from other employees. It's kind of exciting when somebody you know, gets an opportunity and, and they uh, seem to really appreciate it when they get treated just like any other applicant. Groovy's Bakery actually was founded out of uh, my great grandfather having a disability. We service about 120 uh, different customers every night. Um, and we're a fresh bakery. We do it 365 days out of the year, which creates tremendous, tremendous strain um, on our labor capabilities. Before COVID, it was so hard to find labor. I don't know how it is for everyone else, but even now during COVID, even seeing unemployment rates, I'm still having a hard time getting people in the door. Um, and that's something I think that anyone in the business world right now, we just, we can't connect the dots right now. Why is this happening? That stat of about uh, the turnover rates, you know, 8% versus 45%. I would argue in the food world, 45% is kind of low. The identical job performance ratings, I would 100% agree with that. That is spot on. It's also a business driver. You want your business to reflect the community, the neighborhood. So there's people with disabilities in the community. So we're always looking to, to find employees in, in different avenues. What changes has your company made to help employees with disabilities get hired and succeed on the job? We've looked at modifying our interview process. A lot of our um, success has come from really looking at, at a deeper level, what we're doing from an interview process. So, you know, instead of those common behavioral based interviews, we like to bring in individuals for more of a job shadow to really see and, and get their feedback on how they could perform in the role by, instead of asking them, you know, those typical interview questions, um, by customizing that interview process, we've really been able to break down that barrier and allow individuals with disabilities, you know, to really shine in that interview process and showcase what they can do versus what they can't do well. There's a lot of uh, agencies that provide job coaches, which is just somebody that comes in, they assist us in the training, and then they're just kind of a support if we would need, you know, help. And, you know, that's the difference is like a person with some type of, you know, disability or barrier, they might not get trained in the same fashion as, you know, handing somebody a checklist and saying, you know, here, here's what you need to do today. They might need some more verbal one-on-one -on -one training and, you know, a little bit more concrete definitions or examples of here's, here's how the job works, here's what you need to do. You know, something might look a little different than most businesses, but, you know, that's how we do things. First, that was a big concern of mine, but every time it's always worked out and I've always found myself always overthinking and just thinking, you know, am I going to have enough people around? It's very surprising and uplifting to see how workers kind of accept other people in. That's been really, really amazing. And I just, yeah, any advice is just people don't overthink it. It's we're all human beings. We're all trying to get a job done here. And it's really amazing kind of to watch that naturally happen. How have you found and hired workers with disabilities? It's difficult to find people with 3% unemployment. It's difficult to find people at 20% unemployment. So we're always looking for, you know, where are the people are that, you know, are looking for jobs and how can we connect with them? And that's a big part of my job is just not waiting for people to come and find you is to go out in the community and find out who's looking for work, uh, who's got support. Um, there's a lot of resources out there for employers. I think it's taking down the barriers of, you know, um, going to the community agencies. There's a lot of uh, supportive agencies, employment services, uh, going out, meeting with uh, the representatives and then figuring out a way to connect with people that are looking for work. We um, work with a lot of different service organizations. Right now we work with about seven different service organizations. I've been a big advocate for temporary work experiences because I think that is a great, great avenue for anyone you know interested in trying this. That really helped us to kind of see how this would work. And you know, it, it helped us actually find a fit for that individual, you know, because you get about anywhere from 60 to 90 days to trying to find that right fit for an employee.
the benefits are, are high of strategically sourcing individuals with disabilities that come into the workplace. So, you know, we've really partnered with community-based organizations and DVR to be able to target individuals for really not only entry-level roles, but middle-skilled roles as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of individuals out there that um, are looking for employment that are a perfect match for a lot of the roles that we have to fill. We started off by using temporary work experiences through DVR. Um, it's a really nice opportunity to give somebody up to a 90-day working interview to be able to see if they're a good fit for the position. Um, we've hired two-thirds of those we brought in through that program already. What advice would you give to other employers? The biggest word of advice is just create that long lasting relationship with anyone. You know, now when I bring someone in the door, when I know I'm going to have a worker for a long time, I train that worker a little bit differently. You know, if, if someone comes, you said, I'm going to work for you for the next 20 years, you're going to train them much, much differently. You are going to invest heavily, heavily in their future. So that's a, that's a big, big key of advice there. Check the resources, just connecting with who's the right fit for what you're doing. And then trying to develop a long-term relationship of, you know, we don't want to just hire somebody. We want to make it successful. We want every employee, we want to be a long-term employee that grows with the business. So uh, the kind of the one-on-one the -on -one connections you can make with different agencies where they, they could kind of help you like, oh, I'm not this person. They're going to be a great fit for you guys. Start small. You know, it just takes one success story. The first individual we hired through this initiative is still working here, and he really paved the way for you know, those other 30 plus individuals to get their foot in the door. So start small as well as, you know, there's resources out there that are easily accessible through DVR. You know, I would say tap into them and, and leverage their expertise first instead of going at this alone. Um, and then really look at the interview process and seeing if you're being inclusive in that process to make sure that, you know, all individuals are welcome with you in your organization, even if you have to look at things completely different than you ever had to before. For resources to help you find job seekers with disabilities, click on the link in the video description below, then click on resources for businesses.